my channel my name is Georgia and I'm a knit and crochet designer and today I'm going to show you how to make <laughs> this beautiful crochet beach dress it's easy once you get the pattern so once you get the stitch pattern it's easy because there's no complicated increases or decreases or anything like that you will need a four millimeter crochet hook and some thread weight yarn I'll go into that in more detail in a moment this crochet pattern is suitable for any body size any body shape because I'm showing you how to make it exactly to your own body measurements it's also completely versatile in the length as well so the width and the length totally versatile you do need to know how to crochet if you want to make this dress so it is basic stitches pretty much and I do go through the stitches with you but you do need to know the basics of how to crochet first if you like this video please give it a thumbs up it really helps support my channel and also make sure to subscribe to get more crochet and knit tutorials from me but without any more babbling let's get crafting okay this is the yarn I'm going to be using this is DMC Petra number three. Um, so DMC do three different Petra yarns, number seven, number five, and number three. Number three is the thickest. It recommends a 2.5 millimeter hook and it's a thread weight yarn. It's pretty thin. I'm gonna be using a four millimeter hook, a crochet hook. Hopefully I can find my ergonomic one because I haven't used one of these in ages, but I can't find it. And then I've just got some scissors and a yarn needle. Okay, so for the beginning chain, you need to make sure you do a multiple of 10 plus one. So I'm gonna chain 200 plus one, so that's obviously 201. Um, or you could do 210 plus one, 220 plus one, um, you know, 300 plus one, 100 plus one, whatever size is gonna fit you. So do the chain, um, however many you wanna do. So I'm gonna do 200 plus one, and then before I start, um, my work I'm just going to wrap it around my body and make sure that it fits how I want it to fit but I'll show you that when we get to it so I'm just going to start off with a slip knot and then chain my 200 plus one this feels so awkward with this hook and I'll show you what to do for the next stage once you've done your chain okay my head might cut off in this clip but once you've got your chain all you need to do is just wrap that chain around your body. Make sure you don't accidentally undo any of the chains. So I've got a big loop here so that I don't accidentally undo any of the chains. And then you just wrap it around your body. Hold the two ends of the chain together. Then you can just see how big it's going to be. You can see I've got a, quite a lot of space in mine. And obviously you saw the finished result at the start of the video. If you want a tighter um, look, then you can obviously do less chains and maybe have it so it's more closer to your body. But if you do that, you have to make sure that it will fit over the biggest part of your body. So if you've got particularly big hips or particularly big bust, make sure that the chain can fit all the way because there's no increases or decreases. So this chain, needs to fit around your whole body. And obviously the more space you have, the baggier it's gonna be. So I did 200 plus one. This is about, my, my hips are the widest part of me. And this is how much space I've got. And if you feel like you want more space, you can add more chains. And if you want less space, then you can take away chains. So once you're happy with your chain, I'm gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So this stitch here, not the first one, but the second one. Single crochet into the next, single crochet into the next, and we're going to single crochet in every single chain along the row. So I'm going to end up with 200 stitches in total, 200 single crochets. So you get rid of the plus one that you had. 200 plus one means that if we single crochet in the second chain from the hook, we'll end up with 200 stitches. So if you had 250 plus one, you'll end up with 250 stitches and that way you get the multiple of 10. So I'm just gonna keep single crocheting in every single stitch along the row and I'll come back once I've done that. Okay, so now that we've done all of our single crochets along the whole row, you might just wanna wrap this around your body again just to check that it still fits how you want because if you crochet quite tightly, the chain could have shrunk. So you can just check that if you want. Okay, so for row number two, 
we're going to chain five and turn our work. Now we're going to go into the next stitch. So the chain five counts as your first double treble crochet. And then we're going to go into the next stitch. So you're going to wrap your yarn around your hook three times. Then insert the hook into that next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And that's your first double treble. Now we're going to skip two stitches, so we're going to skip that one, skip the next one, and go into this one here. So again, same thing, wrap your yarn around your hook three times, skip two, and then insert the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to chain four. And we're going to do a double treble crochet into the next stitch. So same thing again. Now we're going to skip two stitches and then we've got one double treble crochet in the next four stitches after that. So we've skipped two, then there's one double treble. This is the second double treble. The third. And one more. It's been a long time since I've done a double treble, so it's feeling a bit awkward right now. Now we're going to skip two stitches. So we've got one, two, we're going to go into the third. So same thing with the double treble, skip two. Go into the next one with a double treble. Now we chain four. Double treble in the next stitch. And this creates like a triangle shape, like an upside down triangle. And then we skip two and do one double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So skip one, skip two, go into the next one. And you've got four double treble crochets in each of those next four stitches, just like we did before. So this is the second one. third one and fourth one and that's the pattern that we're going to repeat so I'll leave the instructions on the screen but you're going to keep repeating this across the row so now we're going to skip two double treble crochet in the next stitch Ooh. chain four Double treble into the next stitch. Then skip two and do one double treble in each of the next four stitches. And then once I've done these four, I'll just show you what it's looking like so far. Can you see here in between these there's four normal double trebles here, but one of them looks like it's got a space in the middle. That is because this loop here at the top, you can see it's quite loose. And that is where I didn't have my yarn like um, wrapped around my hook tight enough compared to the other stitches. So that's looking a bit non-uniform compared to say, these four stitches that are all together in a line. These ones are a bit sloppy. Uh, so I might go back and fix that. So here we've got one, two, three, four normal ones. We skip two, do a double treble, chain four, double treble in the next, skip two, and then we go back to one, two, three, four normal ones, 
and so on and so forth. When you get to the end of the row, so this is obviously the start of the row, and the chain five counts as your first double treble, and then you've got a double treble next to it. So when you finish the uh, row, you should finish with two double treble crochets in the last two stitches. So you should have like a V and then skip to double treble, double treble, and that'll be the end of the row. Okay, so I've finished that row, and as you can see, I have two treble, double treble crochets in those last two stitches. Now we're going to turn our work. Now for row three, we're going to chain six. Oops, five, six. So the first five chains count as a double treble crochet and then the sixth chain counts as a chain one. And then what we're gonna do is do a double treble crochet in the same stitch. Um, so right where the base of that chain six is, we're gonna go into that same stitch. So not the next one like we usually do. We're gonna go into the same one. And so in that first sit, stitch, you've essentially got one double treble crochet, chain one, one double treble crochet, like that. And then what you're going to do is we're going to do four double treble crochets in this big chain space. So in the big V shape where the four chains are, we're going to go straight into the chain space and around double treble and we're going to do this four times so there's four in there then we're going to skip this next so the next stitch although there's a gap here these four double trebles should be spread out in the middle but don't worry too much because they will just sort themselves out but so you're going to skip the next two stitches which is that one and that one so you're going to go into the third one which is out of these four double trebles together you want to go into the second one and then we're going to go into the third one as well. So you want to like go into the two middle ones, if that makes sense. So we're going to skip that stitch, skip that stitch and go into the next one with a double treble. So it's into this one here. Then we're going to chain four. And then we're going to double treble into the next stitch, so into that one there. So you can see it's starting to kind of do like the opposite pattern. So you have V, 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 and then it will carry on like that. And you've got cluster, cluster, and then we're doing, going to do a cluster next. So after that, we're going to do four double treble crochets in the big chain space. And then after that, we're going to skip the next two stitches and go into the first middle um, stitch out of those four. So we're going to skip, skip, and go into that one there with a double treble. And then you may be able to guess what's coming next. We're going to chain four. and double treble into the next stitch and that creates the V there we go and so after that you're just going to continue on in that same pattern so you're going to do four double treble crochets in there skip two double treble 
chain four, double treble in the next, four double trebles in the next chain space, skip two, double treble, chain four, double treble, and keep going. I'll leave the instructions on the screen. So I'm nearly at the end of row three, and now I'm gonna skip two, which is that one and that one, and then into the top of the beginning chain from the previous row, we're gonna double treble in that stitch, chain one, and then double treble again in the, oh, in the exact same stitch. So I'll just quickly do that. Chain one, and there we go. So now we have rows one, which is the single crochet row that we did. Then you got row two and row three. And what we're gonna do is alternate between rows two and three. So we just finished row three. We're now going to repeat row two. And then once you finish row two, repeat row three and just keep switching between two and three until you get the length that you want. So we're just going to keep crocheting in this pattern and you can measure your work as you go. So you can hold it up to sort of like your armpits and let the work hang down and wherever the dress finishes up on your body is how long your dress will be. So I'm going to do mine kind of to like probably just below the knee. Um, and that's probably going to be around 34 rows, although I will tell you how many rows that I do. Um, so yeah, happy crocheting and come back when you get to your desired length. And remember that, um, you know, you can do this however long you want. You can do it um, just like below your butt. So you can have like a mini dress, although it is going to have a slit up the back. Um, but then again, you could do the slit up the side or at the front. So, you know, just play around with it and see what works for you. And yeah, I'll meet you back here once we've done all the rows we need to do. Okay, guys, here we are. I have done 34 rows and I held it up to my underarms and let the fabric drape down. And it's pretty perfect. It comes just below my knee. So now what I need to do is a row of single crochet. Okay, so we're just going to chain one and then turn the work so and this is just going to make everything look nice and neat and tidy for when we finish so I'm going to go straight into that chain space you might not have a chain space there depends um what row you finished on so you may have finished on this row in which case you would just single crochet into the next stitch but it doesn't even really matter just do one single crochet for every single stitch that you have on the row. So when you get to a chain space, which I'll show you in a sec. So now I've got to the chain space section. I'm just gonna do four single crochets in the chain space to account for four chains. And then I'll go into the next one into the next stitch and just repeat this all across the row and when you get to the end of the row don't fasten off because we're going to crochet up um, the side or the back I should say so you don't need to fasten off just uh, wait for the next instruction when you get there. So I've done one single crochet on every stitch for the last row. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold our work in half so let me zoom you out so you can see. Do excuse my foot and my bruised toenail. <laughs> um, so it goes like lengthways, if that makes sense. So the single crochet that we just did around is around this top bit here. So you will have a right side and wrong side of your work, but honestly, in a pattern like this, it doesn't really make much difference. For me, I think the edge that we just crocheted, that's gonna go like around our chest. And so I would have the right side facing in. So that's the right side. And then that's, this is the wrong side. Um, and if you can't tell the difference, well then it doesn't matter, does it? Because you won't tell the difference when it's on your body. The right side has like the little Vs going across. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna put those Vs on the inside 
so that when I flip it over they'll be on the outside. So grab the work now and get it so that you can work downwards in your crochet and you could do this with a a uh, yarn needle if you want to um, but I feel, feel like it's easier to do it with crochet so ideally your hook will be on this side but mine's on this side so what I'm going to do is we're going to do slip stitches let me zoom it back down so I, I think I just said I was going to work slip stitches but I think I might do single crochet but you can do either so because my hook is on this side um, it just makes it a little bit awkward to start off with and that is just because I want to have my right side facing in. If I was to have it the other way around then the hook would be on this side. Um, so to start off I just need to insert my hook into the cornermost stitch and then I'm just going to yarn over pull through and do a single crochet and now we can continue working down the rest of the seam so the idea is that you need to close up these two gaps and what we're going to do is throughout your um, seaming make sure that everything is lined up so that you don't accidentally end up with like one edge longer than the other so you need to keep referring back to it just to make sure that everything's nice and straight and you're going to crochet down as far as you want so because the dress I mean it depends how long you made it if you've made it like thigh length then you can crochet all the way down and obviously close up the whole thing because otherwise your bum will be on show unless that's what you want my dress is below the knee and so I'm gonna probably crochet about two-thirds of the way down to about there maybe a bit more um, and leave this bit open so because it just makes it easier to walk in because otherwise if it's too tight you won't be able to walk in it um I feel like mine is actually going to be quite oversized but still I think it looks cute to have a little slit at the back so keep doing single crochets down here so you just have to make sure that you go into and I'm probably just going to go into the chain space honestly but you could go through each individual um stitch but it's just going to take longer but just make sure you go through the front and then through the back pull the yarn through and then you can either slip stitch or single crochet and then go into the next one and single crochet and just make sure that you've got both the front and the back um what i mean by front and back is this is the front and this is the back so just make sure you've got both of those in every stitch make sure that it's lined up as best as you can and you can just see that this is starting to be joined together and so on this side you're going to get like a bit of a lumpy seam and that's going to go on the inside so afterwards we'll turn the work the other way around and it will be much less visible. So do that for as far down as you want and when you've got as far down as you want you can fasten off. Before you fasten off though I would just check you know pull the dress over your head um, and just check that the slit is at the right length that you want before you fasten off and then you can fasten off. So I appreciate it's a bit difficult to see but here is here is my seam and I kind of just ended up doing five or six single crochets in the little chain spaces and it turned out very neat and tidy and so I've left about seven inches or so at the bottom that is open so I just stopped there. So now what I'm going to do is weave in my ends and then I'm going to flip the work so it is facing right side out. So we want this bulky seam to be on the inside. So I'm just going to literally turn my work inside out around the other way. But I'm going to weave in my ends first. Okay, so now that you've got your right side facing out. So you want to lay your dress so that you have the top end. This is where the straps are going to go. And... You can see here that my seam is there 
on the inside and it's on the back so this is the front and I've got the seam so that it's laying on the back so the way around the dress will go now what we're going to do is grab two strands of yarn you don't need another ball of yarn just grab the other end from the same ball of yarn make a slip knot and you still need a four millimeter crochet hook and we're going to chain 230 now 230 is a lot of chains and it makes a very long strap but it makes the straps versatile so it's up to you, you don't have to make it as long as 230 if you don't want but I would personally recommend the longer the straps the better in my opinion um, and for a few extra minutes on straps you know it's worth it in the end we're not going to single crochet back down them or anything. We're literally just going to chain and then fasten off. But what you need to do before you do that is just pull this front down. And you can see the seam is right in the middle. So you want to have it so it's central. And then from the middle, you can count out chain spaces. So let's do, or I'm going to count into these groups of four here. So I've got one, two, three three and that is where I'm going to place my first strap and if I just place that back there that's about there on um you know on the dress and then we'll do the same for the other side one two three the other strap will go there so that way they're completely even on that third group along of four treble crochets I'm going to attach my yarn feel free to put your strap somewhere else you might want to have it closer into the middle or whatever it's completely up to you but you're going to attach your yarn with a slip stitch now you want to go in from the inside so the inside of the seam is here and I'm going from the inside to the outside rather than from the outside to the inside if that makes sense and I'm just going to join with a slip stitch and then I'm just going to chain my 230 and I'm going to count 230 chains because I want both my straps to be exactly the same size. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. When you get to the length that you want, you can just fasten off. And then I've just fastened off oops, and pulled that nice and tight. And I'm going to leave the little tails there, but you can weave those in if you want. And then we're just going to do the exact same again for the other side. So go back to that middle seam, count out the stitches so that you've got the exact same distance between each strap. Slip knot. One, two, three. I'm going from the inside to the outside with a slip stitch. And then same again, chain 230 or the same as however many you did for your last strap. Well, my yarn is alive right now. And then fasten off again. And then all that we have to do after that is just um, sort of assemble the straps however we want so now you have both straps don't forget to weave in these ends and make sure that this knot is really secure because it's going to be holding up the weight of the whole dress so just really make sure that you weave in the ends properly and make it as secure as you possibly can now we have both our straps attached to the back of our dress and what you're going to do is still keeping everything sort of nice and straight and neat and even you're going to grab one of your straps and you're gonna so this is the front of the dress you're gonna put it through from the inside to the outside one of the big holes like that so then this bit goes over your shoulder and then this long bit ties around your neck and then you get your other strap try and make it as even as possible obviously you can change this once um if you try it on and you don't like it you can chase the plate change the placement of the straps um like the front bit that we're doing now you could try and like do crisscrosses or like you know play around with it but again you pull that 
through the big loops from the inside to the outside. That bit goes around your shoulder, that bit ties around your neck. So I hope that makes sense. So they go over your shoulders and then that goes around your neck or play around with it and do what you'd like. Something else to note about this dress is that you can see along the bottom, it's kind of bunching up. So let me show you properly. So that is going to be the front bottom of my dress. Now, I don't really like the way that that's sitting. I'd rather it sit more like, you know, so that the pattern is more visible. Um, and it will have a tendency to kind of bunch up. Um, the more you wear it, the more it will drop. But if you want it to look completely perfect, I would suggest blocking this dress because the top of the dress is going to be more stretched because that's where the straps are compared to the bottom. So the top of the dress is going to look really lovely and the bottom of the dress may bunch up. If it does, I would suggest blocking. If you're not sure um, what blocking is or you've never done it before, check the label on your yarn first, just in case, because like, for example, I what I will do is I'll hang this up against the door and I've got a steamer and I will just steam it and just, you know, manipulate the material, pull it down, steam it, and um, that should do the trick. But obviously steaming it is hot. So if you was to steam like acrylic, for example, that would not go well. So you need to check um, your yarn label first, just to check. Another way you can do it is you can get the whole um, dress wet either by submerging it in water or you can just get a spray bottle and spray it lay it out on the floor lay it down how you want it and then like pin it into place or sometimes I just put like a heavy book or something on it let it dry and then it will be good to go as well so if you've never done blocking before that is kind of just like a little uh, rough guide but I'm going to try mine on now and here it is the finished dress and you know what, I'm so happy with this. It's actually baggier than I intended, but for me, that is perfect for beachwear because it's just like, it's just, um, I don't know, it's just casual. And I love the how the straps crisscross here and go around the neck. So yeah, and I've got the split up the back. I haven't blocked it yet, um, but actually it's not looking too bad, so. Georgia, here is your reminder. Sorry about that. Well done guys, if you did get to the end of the tutorial and you have a finished dress, I'm so proud of you and I'm so happy that you followed along this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like the video. <coughs> <coughs> Let's try that again. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. I've got loads coming your way. Summer crochet stuff is what I'm focusing on right now. Don't forget to tag me on socials. I really, really, really want to see your finished dresses. But other than that, have a great day or night whenever you're watching this.